in England, Elvis Presley was really loved by absolutely everybody. He was uh, the artist that the teenagers in the 50s came to love and revere. And the strange thing about it was that he, he just went on from there. They grew up as I grew up, and their children began to like Elvis and do now, the kids. And my mother and father and people of that generation then got into Elvis. Elvis came out in uh, England in 56, probably, with Heartbreak Hotel. And he was just totally different. He was something that uh, we'd never heard before. Probably the first singer that had never mimicked anybody. He didn't go out and copy somebody else. He was an original. And we just never heard music like that before. In England, it really was totally different. Even the name. I remember asking a friend, what's that singer's name? And he told me it was Elvis Presley. And Elvis was a name that just nobody had ever heard of before in England. Uh, certainly to hear lots of later on, of course. His singles were selling particularly well at that time, all the way through the 50s. And the Beatles came along, and the early 60s and the rock and roll, uh, modern type rock and roll came into uh, being, and, and Elvis looked like he could suffer, but he didn't because he changed from the single sales, from being a, a rock and roll artist into being, in England, what seemed to be a more M.O.R. artist. He was a middle of the road man and began to sell albums at an enormous rate. His album sales were astronomical. While the Beatles were winning singles-wise, Elvis Presley was selling tremendous amounts. He had an Elvis Presley fan club which was uh, reached uh, something like, uh, I think, 85,000 members, which, if you think about it, the fact that Elvis never ever visited England, never went to England, had very little to do with his fan club, uh, in the sense that he never contributed to it, and uh, the information that they got was from, was in fact second-hand from American fan clubs. So, to have a fan club of that size really tells you just how big the man was no question, he, he absolutely loved by three quarters of the population and a star of enormous magnitude, surely the biggest singer that had ever been and that probably ever will be. And I get now, I've had a number of people talk to me from England via letter and telephone and what have we, and uh, there is more interest generated perhaps in England by Elvis's death than there is right at this moment in America. He has, for example, he has 14 albums in the top 50 right at this moment in England, re-release albums, and nine singles in the top 30. And uh, that's never ever been done before by anybody. Uh, the Beatles, I know, had a lot of success over here in, at one stage, but nothing like Elvis has now got. And he's always had that success, that tremendous there's a charisma about the man that spanned America to England. You know, a lot of American artists make it in England, but few of them retain the quality and the love and the support, and the same with English artists in America. Elvis did just that. He was, he is really, was and is totally revered by English audiences. They, uh, the only sad part was that he never made it to England. I'm sure that the fans, and I particularly, uh, would have loved to have seen Elvis, and, and, and England, the English people, were just dying. There was always talk. There was always a great deal of rumours. Well, one day Elvis will come to England, and then there was talk that Colonel Parker, at one stage or another, had uh, talked to various promoters about bringing him over. At one time, there was a thought that he would do a summer concert, uh, not all that long ago, three or four years ago, in Wembley Stadium, which is a 100,000-seater stadium. A funny story about that was that the price, the, the price that was quoted to uh, Colonel Parker was £100,000, $200,000. And Colonel Parker was reported to have said, well, that's all right for me, but what about Elvis's money? Um, and I, that's probably the reason that he never made it, simply because uh, he was too expensive. He wanted too much money. He couldn't blame the man. Um, but that didn't, it's amazing that it did not detract from his popularity, not one jot. He just continued to be the enormous star year after year after year. And a great tribute to the man, and tribute to his management too. But I think the reason that he got initially such a stronghold was his uniqueness and his genuineness and the fact that there were, he was no carbon copy of anyone. He just 
was himself. He put everything he had into his singing, particularly in those early days, to see a singer give his all, as we were seeing in television shows and so forth, was just so new to us. And it was great, and he's really loved. <laughs>